It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today we're going to be making sunflower toppers. These were requested by a colleague at my work for her daughter's cake. I went out and bought all of these cutters for different types of flowers because I was finding I didn't have all of the cutters I needed for various flowers. So I'm super excited to share that tutorial with you in future where I'll go over all of the different flower cutters that I purchased. I dyed my fondant yellow because as you guys know, I always buy my white fondant in bulk and then I just dye it. The only type of fondant that I purchase is black fondant. Now when using these cutters, they are sharp, but you do need to kind of wiggle things around. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my foam mat and placing the flower on it and just using my finger to press it down. I couldn't find a cake tool that I liked that would just kind of flatten out the petals the way that sunflower petals are. Then I'm taking this tool and I'm just making sure that I still have the differentiation of petals and then I'm also going to put an additional line down the center of each petal here. There are multiple ways to make sunflowers out of fondant, but I really love to steer clear of wires when I can. That being said, wire flowers look gorgeous and you can do a lot more with them in terms of movement, but I think this is just going to be going flat on a cake, so I'm gonna make things super simple for myself. I'm also going to repeat that step multiple times for five flowers, and I wanna do it two times each so that I can overlay the petals on top of one another. Now this flower cutter is for a daisy, but you can really turn any cutter into whatever you see fit. And I thought that this would work really nicely for sunflowers. Once you have all of them cut out, then you can go ahead and airbrush with a little bit of orange. If you don't want to have an orangey tinge to your sunflowers, then you could go in with some gold. Anything that's just a little bit darker than yellow. Apply a little bit of water to the center of each flower and then stack your flowers. And you really don't need to wait for the airbrushing to fully dry. When stacking your flowers, you wanna make sure that the petals are showing underneath. You don't want to have them just stacked one on top of another or else it won't have a realistic flare. Taking that leftover yellow fondant I have from the flowers, I'm just dyeing it a brown color. And this is going to be for my wooden sign that I'm creating as well as the centers of the flower. So I'm going to create this wooden sign here. Now what I really should have done is I should have done the wood grain first and then cut it out, but no matter, it still works out. You just need to take any caking tool of your choice. You could even do this with a toothpick and create a wood grain pattern. You can make it look like it's made out of multiple pieces of wood by just adding in these indents here. And for a little added detail, I'm just going to put little holes in the corner of the sign to make it look like it's going to be nailed to the cake. This part here is really, really simple. Now I could have done this multiple ways, but I decided just to cut the circles a little bit larger in the center so that it doesn't look so much like a daisy and looks more like a sunflower. You could also do this with thicker fondant to create a little bit more realism, but I wanted to keep this a little bit flatter. If you actually look up close to the middle of a sunflower, it's filled with a ton of seeds. And so there's a lot, a lot of intricate detail, but we're just gonna mimic that by putting in these little dots here. Thank you. 
Now we're going to make some leaves. I'm gonna show you how to do it two ways. The first way, I'm going to just use a regular punch cutter. And what this does is it puts that detailing on it right away for you so you don't have to do anything else. I will say though that the leaf ends up a little bit chunkier so it's a little bit less realistic. With this method here, what I'm doing is I'm taking some fondant and then I made it into a leaf shape. And now I'm just kind of using this tool to create a little bit of definition. Then I'm gonna take my balling tool to make that leaf nice and thin on the edges. Now you might be thinking that this color is a little bit off for a leaf, but I always like to make the color really nice and light and then I airbrush the color in later. Now, if you don't have a foam mat, you can always use the palm of your hand, which I did for several years before getting one of these. And all you need to do is make sure that your hand has a nice layer of cornstarch on it so nothing sticks. Now, I'm not really sure what the whole look of this cake is going to be like because I'm not making the whole cake. I'm just giving the toppers. So I decided to add in these little vines just to give a little bit of something whimsy to the cake feel. I'm going to go in now and airbrush that brown color over top of this. Now, the brown color is actually not too different, but of course, whenever you're airbrushing, the colors are a lot more saturated than the colors of your fondant if you dyed your fondant. You do wanna make sure that you try out your airbrush on a piece of paper before you begin, just so that you know that there's not going to be any overspray or splattering, because sometimes if your machine is slightly clogged, that can happen, or if you don't shake up your colors enough. I also used to always use edible food gel mixed with vodka and put that into my machine, but it really clogged it up. So since then, I always, always use airbrush colors, and I haven't had a problem since. I also make sure to run a lot of water through the machine between colors, so that that I don't have any weird spraying happening. Now, if you don't have an airbrush machine, you can still accomplish this with petal dust or luster dust if you wanna make it a bit more shiny, or you can just leave it as is and it will still look good, but you will need to change up the colorings that you choose for your flowers and leaves. I would go darker and more vibrant with both. I'm just using my water activated edible paint palette to create this sign here. Now, if you were a little bit heavy handed with your edible airbrush, then you might notice it might be still wet. So make sure that you don't paint on anything until everything is fully dry. I think the styling of this would also look really cute if you decided to go a bit more messy with the writing to make it look kind of like dripping paint. Really important whenever you're making fondant work that you're just going to let dry or you're going to give to somebody that you put it on parchment paper to prevent sticking. Let's get into the pricing of these. Now this can be a little bit tricky because you are just selling the topper and not a cake as a whole. So what I would charge for this is $50. How I arrived at this is the amount of fondant that was used is probably around $20 alone. And then all of the work was pretty quick, but you do have to have an airbrush machine and all those other tools to create this. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys.